الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد حبيبي في الله الله سبحانه وتعالى says كل نفس ذائقة الموت every soul shall taste death and there's no doubt that whether you're a believer or whether you disbelieve that you realize that every soul will taste death and that every one of us has experienced death from loved ones close to us and otherwise. And with that being said, or perhaps it's better to say Everyone should be cognizant. Everyone should realize that they will taste death. Because many people actually behave as if death will never touch them. But if you ask them, they will agree, yes, I will die one day. But they behave in a manner as if death will never touch them. And may Allah protect us from being of those. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. And... The servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should always be prepared to not attach their hearts to the life of this world. Meaning that no, we don't sit in the mountains and meditate and stay away from everything. This is not what we are calling people to. <clears throat> but yet we are calling to not allow this dunya to deceive you. To have you go to those things which are impermissible and for you to take it as if it is your last abode but being cognizant of death realizing that at any time it can take you it can come to you your soul can be taken and it can be snatched from your body or it can be eased out gently that this will keep you keep you cognizant of death and watchful over your own deeds and actions and this is the reason why the mu'min should reflect upon death often and not allow this worldly life to infect and consume his or her heart Wa'ana ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qala أخذ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بمنكبي منكبية فقال كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب أو عابر السبيل أو عابر السبيل <تصفيق> وكان ابن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنهم يقول إذا أمسيت فلا تنتظر الصباح وإذا أسبحت فلا تنتظر المساء وخذ من صحتك صحتك لمرضك ومن حياتك لموتك رواه بخاري بخاري In these ahadith the first is the hadith both of them are from Ibn Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه and he said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam grabbed me by the shoulders and or grabbed me <coughs> the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he, he, he grabbed me and he said be in this world as if you are a stranger or as if you are a traveler. And Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he used to say, if you reach the evening, then do not wait for the morning. And if you reach the morning, then do not wait or expect to see 
the evening. Take from your health before your before sickness uh, overcomes you, and take from your life before your death. And this is in Bukhari. What we learn from these hadith <clears throat> is first the excellence of the teaching method of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that he would, when he was teaching his Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu Majma'een that he would do things in order to gain their attention, to hold their attention. Another benefit we gain from this hadith is that the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, mu the mu'min, the Muslim, and in fact everyone, should <clears throat> use this life as a means, but not as an end. Not as, as if it, it is their final destination, but use this life to bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the ultimate destination for the mu'min that they want to achieve is in Jannah to Firdaus. So to, using this life as a means to the hereafter is what is the important objective of the mu'min. The objective is not this life, but using this life as a means to get to Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, A dunya sijinu mu'min jannatul kafir. That this life is a prison for the believer. And it is paradise for the disbeliever. They got they got all their reward because in the hereafter they'll be of the Khasidin. And may Allah protect us from being of the Khasidin. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of those who are cognizant of death and bless all of our families to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Him and Him alone. And may Allah forgive us of our many, many sins and our many shortcomings. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم